to take a walk in our 20 Dunam ecological garden. And we have to emphasize it's an ecological garden, not a botanical garden. In Zev Naves' vision, the founder of the garden saw humans as an integral part of the human nature system, or what he called the cybernetic system, where you cannot separate one from the other. Zev Nave, whose vision uh, really drove the creation of the garden, was absolutely a visionary. He was saying things 30, 40 years ago that now we're treating as if it's some kind of new science. And what he was saying then was that we have to end the separation between the natural world and the human world and stop looking at those as two uh, independent uh, entities. One of the first publications that I read on environmental education was a publication of Ze'ev Nave, who was thinking already at the early 1980s about how to make people learn about the environment, appreciate the environment, and be active in their environment. The emphasis of the garden is a teaching and research garden. That is, we want courses to come out, we want students to come out, we want researchers to come out. We take the pre-service teachers and we teach them how to teach in the outdoors, in the ecological garden. And we use it as a lab, as every other lab they use at the Technion. They identify plants and they experience how to teach students. We bring students sometimes so they can have their own students to teach in the garden. And they can experience and overcome many challenges that teachers have when they take their students out. We're in the middle of a sea of concrete and city right above one of Israel's busiest industrial areas. And this area, as you can hear, is essentially quiet. There's bird life here, there's a place where you can come, you can reflect, you can relax. For students who are all day in the classroom or researchers who spend their days inside their offices, to come out here is a chance to just re-interact, a chance to rest a little bit. Recently we had two planting uh, tree ceremonies here. One with the president of the Technion who planted an oak tree together with kids of the after-school clubs. Uh, the other, a uh, few weeks uh, later, we planted the tree in the memory of uh, Ze'ev Neve. Again, another beautiful oak tree. And all the people who appreciate uh, Ze'ev Neve's memory came to plant with us. One of the great design features, if we look from the perspective of landscape architecture of the garden, is that it actually takes advantage of the topography and drains a lot of the flood runoff and also a lot of the, uh, the water coming out of the air conditioning units of buildings. And it flows through here and we can take advantage of that flow to recreate wetland environments. And this place which was uh, actually nowhere at that time was just a place where chemical waste was dumped and one of the first areas that was cleaned in order to become part of the ecological garden was this area which is now a pond. The pond is very very beautiful and it's one of the main attractions especially in the summertime. One of the uniqueness of this garden is that uh, it has an actual natural Mediterranean creek uh, with flowing water during winter and just the natural uh, waterfalls and boulders and uh, the natural vegetation of Mount Cornell. Come into the ecological garden and suddenly you're reminded at least with regard to the natural environment where you are. You're right in the middle of the Carmel region. It's a, a landscape that connects us biblically, that connects us culturally, that connects us back to the land. And this is the same landscapes where 2,000 years ago Eliyahu Navi, Elijah the prophet walked these hills back then. They're the exact same environment that you can read about in the stories of the Torah. And this connects us back to that, not only to the natural world, but to our own historical and cultural roots in this area.